They say the best things in life are free, but all I care about are inches and Benjamins. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Bessie, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the world. All nine of our internationally renowned superstar drag queens walked the runway one last time in their finest eleganza extravaganza. And our final four went head to head and toe to toe and heel to heel and lash to lash. And a lip sync smackdown for the crowd. So tonight we'll be ranking each of those runways from rottest rat to hottest hot, awarding five flames for if I think a look matched the category appropriately and another five arbitrary flames for if I liked the look. And then we'll be dissecting that smackdown, congratulating our winter... <laughs> winner. <laughs> and we'll also be diving deep into the backlash Jimbo's been receiving online for her words that she didn't say during that spicy untucked, her apology, and the rest of the queendom's reactions. But first... What's that? Your Scentbird scents are here! <gasps> I can't wait to sniff them. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that gives you the opportunity to try a new designer perfume, cologne, or unisex fragrance every single month. And Scentbird works directly with over 600 brands like Prada and Gucci. This month I received Sephiro by Floris, an inviting blend of orange, citrus, and sheer jasmine that feels like sunshine on your skin mm. and stem by malanin goats which captures the crispness of freshly cut stems mm. and finally mcm which combines hyper real raspberry and clean textured woods for a floral and woodsy tranquility yummy but here's the tea designer fragrances can cost hundreds of dollars and picking one out can be almost impossible which is why i love using scentbird they've got an amazing online quiz that can help you discover new fragrances oh and did i mention each bottle contains a full 30-day supply and scentbird is already a bargain at just 15 dollars a month but they've partnered with me to bring you an even when you click the link in the description of my video and use code BUSSY5, you'll get 55% off your first month at Scentbird, which comes out to just $7 to smell like a million bucks. That's right, you can spring into a whole new you with Scentbird by clicking the link in the description of this video and getting your first month for 55% off when you use code BUSSY5. <sighs> Thanks, Scentbird, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's spin the globe one last time. At the bottom of my list tonight is Cheryl Hull. Let's start with the positives here. <laughs> the wig that she's wearing looks absolutely gorgeous. And I think the gown color that she chose is great. She says she's serving all the flowers of the UK, including the English rose, the Welsh daffodil, the Scottish thistle, and the Northern Irish flax flower. But the question remains, I think, does any of that actually translate on the runway? And my answer to that question, perceiving this as someone from outside the UK, is not really. Which, let me be clear, would not be a huge problem, I think, if the flowers looked good. They feel very piecemeal on this dress, and I want more of them. I want a flower explosion. Girl, I want so many flowers on the dress that the bees are swarming around you trying to pollinate them. Or at least a couple of bigger ones mixed throughout just to give a little more dimension. And not to mention the red flowers themselves are the exact same color as the fabric used to construct the dress, so those were lost completely. Other improvements that I would make to this look include making it a singular asymmetrical stretch which could really have opened up that beautiful shoulder she's got. And something else needs to be happening with the bottom part of the dress, because the way that skirt gathers around her waist looks more like she fell out of bed with a duvet wrapped around her still and hit the runway than it does an intentional wrapping. And y'all know I love trains. On me, in me, around me. But this one just didn't go the distance. This look was a rat. Next up, look to the sky. It's a bird. No, it's a plane. No, it's Janie JK. As always, positives first. I love the silhouette and the way the dress hits the floor. It really does that. And you can really tell that she tried with this look. There's a lot of character in it. And I love that it represents her country in so many ways. With all those tulips, the beautiful blue sky and sun. However, I think they were all a little too literal, which leads me to say that this gown was not necessarily elegant. I have the same critique here for Janie's dress as I did about Cheryl's. If we're gonna put flowers on top of a dress like this so obviously, I think that placement needs to be done very carefully, with changes in density and pattern of placement in order to create a more interesting visual effect. And the clouds that are on this gown honestly look a little too much like doodles for me. Hmm. Doodles. Doodles. And that hair on this look really doesn't do anything to save it. This look is a royal rat. 
But before we move on from Janie Decay, I do want to praise her for an excellent run this season in the challenges and lip syncs. It was really in the looks department where she struggled, which did surprise me considering how well she did on her original season of Drag Race on the runway. The B look, her finale look, just had so much more polish than what she was able to showcase on this UK versus the world season. And if you haven't seen her on the original season, I definitely recommend you go check it out. Next up, in the middle of my rankings tonight, with both queens receiving five out of 10 possible hot flames on my scorecard, we've got Juju B and Bag of Chips, who I think actually could have taken a note from each other to improve their looks. Let's start with Juju. It's no secret that a lot of her runways have been a little simple this season. And this finale gown, I think, was an upgrade from some of the stuff that she had been showcasing for sure. Most importantly, I want to praise her for serving a complete look here. I actually love this gown. That double peplum moment is fabulous. But honestly, it doesn't excite me in the way that I want a finale runway to. It's like any queen could have worn this dress and looked good in it. Where's the flavor? Where's the jujube spice of life to add a little whimsicality to this and maybe even give a nod to her home country like so many of the other queens did tonight? And of course, jujube is a victim of her own prior performance on All Stars 5. She should have just worn that finale look again. And Juju's foil tonight on the runway was Baga. This was exciting, strange, weird, and referential. The headpiece she's got on is a recreation of 1967 Elizabeth Taylor headpiece that she wore in Venice to a masked ball. And that part of her look, I love. Like, yes, Baga, let's give the children something to gag over. Thank you. But the rest of her look felt more like an afterthought to me. The gown is pretty enough, and it's sparkly, but it's missing about six inches of fabric on the bottom, and I'm not really sure what that neckline's doing. It's just like Baga's head was serving one look over here, and her body was serving another look over there. Baga needed a little more cohesion, and Juju needed a little more personality, so I'm gonna leave both of these looks at a warming up. Next up... <laughs> It's about time we saw Miss Lemon on the runway again. Bitch, this look had me gagging. Gagging, gaggy, gaggy, gaggy. <laughs> this is the wow, 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 wow factor that we've kind of grown to expect on All Stars finales. That giant maple leaf is insane and must have taken up one of her luggage allowances alone. And the gaggier thing about that maple leaf is that when she turns around on the runway, it folds into a train moment for the look. I love that this look screams Canada and that Lemon tried a new color. It's an absolutely crazily, insanely good presentation of drag. That said, the stem of this maple leaf left me with a few questions. Because when you take away all the glitz and glam of the red and the sparkles and the big and the bam, we're kind of left with a drum major's uniform and a flat wig. Or maybe even some kind of like Santa Claus fantasy happening in the front with the way those buttons are placed and the belt hits. It just separates her body a little strangely and in a way I think she did not intend. But this look represented Canada well. And true to her name, this look was sweet, sour, and hot. Next up. Morange? Morange. Morange. Morange hearts. This is a gorgeous look on Mo. The wig, the height on that wig alone, it's jaw dropping, stunning. And I love the overall vibes of this feeling kind of like a classic Versace runway. That holographic bodice with that orange fabric is absolutely beautiful on her. And I love that she found a way to incorporate a really long train into this runway, even though it wasn't a traditional ball gown. But what really got me was I didn't realize until like the third or fourth inspection up close that there's actually nude illusion fabric between those holographic pieces. I thought that was her real skin. Her attention to detail here on this look is great, and I think it's a beautiful capstone on what was a wonderful runway journey for her this season. Like, if there was one girl that brought it every single time to the runway, it was Mo. So thank you, Mo, for giving us something to gag over every single week. This one included. This look is hot. And next up, it's not her special day, but God, is she dressed for it. It's Jimbo. So <laughs> If Lemon's look screamed Canada with that giant maple leaf, then Jimbo's seductively whispered it in a snow lodge near a fire with a giant golden moose hung above it. This look on Jimbo is so breathtakingly beautiful, perfectly cut, tailored, fitting like a damn glove. And the details here that subtly hint at her heritage 
are insane. The gown itself is literal eye candy and looks like crushed maple leaves forged into holographic dragon scales. And the detail of having the little sharp leaf pieces in the dress slits and coming off one side on an asymmetrical shoulder moment, chef's kiss. Jimbo gave his glamorous wintry witch perfection. This look is hot. And in addition to serving an immaculate runway, Jimbo also <laughs> served us an immaculate 30 seconds and untucked. The level of drama that she brought there, she said, RuPaul told me to release all my negative feelings. So while I could bring up that your shoes are ugly, your dress is not tailored, your wig is flat, every idea that you've ever had is shit, your mother's a whore, your dad's dead, and you'll never have the level of success that I have even in your dreams, I won't. <laughs> Miss Jimbo, Miss Jimbo. Never change. And now let's take a look into the drama and controversy of it all as it played out online in real time. Some fans immediately praised Jimbo for giving us a great reality TV moment. And others were more critical of what Jimbo said, including Reverend Dr. Silky Nutmeg Ganache, who took to Twitter writing, Pangina should have slapped the out of that girl. How can you call someone a stupid? Read her garments like she wasn't killing. You gave up and got eliminated. Don't come for my black for taking up for a POC. And later that same night, Priyanka and Juju B got involved with Priyanka tweeting this. What did Jimbo do? Which, without context, can be read several ways, but I think it's important to note that shortly after that, Priyanka tweeted, did Lemon eat up the runway? Suggesting to me that she hadn't yet watched the finale at that point in time, but was trying to decipher the buzz on Twitter by asking those questions. But to that first tweet Priyanka tweeted, Juju B replied the next morning writing, text me. And a Twitter user followed up under Juju B's text me, writing, what can you tell us, tiny competitor? Absolutely nothing, babe. Then another Twitter user chimed in. She signed enough RuPaul NDAs to know what she can and can't say, to which GGB finally responded, nah. People usually show exactly who they are without anyone exposing them. And it wasn't immediately clear exactly what Juju meant by those tweets, but prior to this finale, both queens had done exit interviews, which had some pretty salacious headlines like GGB's best isn't good enough, quoted from Jimbo. I think that GGB is probably really tired combined with the pandemic and a lack of funds as well as a lapse in judgment. I think that she's trying her best, but her best just isn't good enough. Which Juju addressed in a separate interview saying this. It's really interesting to see that headline because that's always been in my mind my entire life. You're just not good enough. You're just not good enough. But because of that headline, a lot of the fans came for me and I took it with grace. I didn't do the elimination, but I was a victim of the consequences of the elimination. And whether or not these two interviews have anything to do with what Juju was hinting at in those tweets, we really can't be sure for now. So let's go ahead and put an unsolved mystery pin in this one and move back to our drama timeline. Shortly after Juju's responses to Priyanka, Jimbo finally hopped online and responded to that Silky tweet, writing, sorry Silky, with several red lip emojis. A minute later, Silky responded, you're saying sorry to the wrong girl. I'm just a BIPOC that felt that job, but I'm used to it. And a couple minutes later, that same early morning, Jimbo wrote on her own Twitter timeline, just watch the episode. Sure, I'm glad I didn't say those things. LOL. Love you, at Pangina Heels. To which Pangina replied later that day, writing, love you, babes. And Jimbo later addresses the situation again on her timeline, writing, I love you, at Pangina Heels. I apologize for being such a shady bitch. I like untucked with a bit of spice. I'm sorry to anyone who was feeling upset. And for everyone worried that I'm not getting enough hate and backlash, you can rest assured I am. So as you can see, most of this drama was just Jimbo dealing with and handling the response to what she said in Untucked. And while Jimbo was a very smart queen who undoubtedly knew what she was going to do in Untucked would have a polarizing response, I do want to remind y'all that this is reality TV at the end of the day. And reality TV that was filmed over a year ago, no less. That is to say, negativity directed at either of them is definitely not something either of them would want for themselves or their counterparts. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. And finally tied for my top spot in tonight's ranking is Blue Hydrangea and Pangina Heels. Let's do Blue first. Blue <laughs> often talks about how she kind of goes for this troll doll fantasy in drag and wore several of these giant decorated beehives throughout the season. So this look I think fit very naturally into her style journey throughout these episodes on the runway and perfectly screams Blue while also giving a little subtle nod to her home country. Of course being in the crystallized doves on the front and back of this gown, this look I think is just the perfect culmination of what I could ever want or possibly imagine that blue looked like at her highest form. And she's also done here what I love most about blue hydrangea. She's unique. This silhouette, no
no one else did this on the runway. And the way this fabric is textured gives so much depth and beauty when it hits the light. And I could talk about how great she looks till I'm blue in the face, but let's go ahead and just say this look is hot. And finally, it's Pangina Heels. When I was watching these runways, this one stopped me dead in my tracks. She says she's giving us Queen Elizabeth I mixed with some Thai realness, which was possibly the most creative way that we saw this blend of UK versus the world come together on the runway tonight. She took a classic look from a style era that has been done many times on Drag Race, but found a way to twist it, break it down, and then put it all back together in something completely unique and breathtaking. The color choice of gold holographic material is stunning. And what really always gets me with Pangina's looks is the intricate attention to detail. There are so many little places on this look for your eye to go and explore. The hair curls, the bodice beating, the tutu rouging, the tie headpiece, which is a callback to her very first runway. And she doesn't just give you a beautiful look, she also serves you a unique way of presenting it on the runway every single time. I'm staring, respectfully. Bangkok has never looked more bang. Side note, I might have just been projecting, but did anybody else catch that face Rue made when Pangina was coming out of the runway in this look? It read regret, sadness, sorrow <laughs> that Pangina wasn't in the finale. Now, concerning this lip sync smackdown, let's talk about it. Mohart is selected on the wheel of lip sinking first and then chooses Bag of Chips to lip sync against. And I really felt for Bag in that moment because her face said it all. I don't think that she believed she had even the smallest chance in the world to win the lip sync against Mo, but she did a good job anyways and is easily outdanced and outperformed by Mo to Domino by Jesse J. Next in the SmackDown, we get Jujubee versus Blue. And this one was the one where I was like, oh, this really could go either way. Their lip sync song though is The Reflex by Duran Duran and it was a strange choice, I, I think, maybe? Maybe I'm overthinking? But Blue rightfully captures the campy elements of this song and the way she performs and while Juju did okay, I don't think she really had it in her to perform this type of song. It was a strange one. Moving on. The lip sync that determines it all is Supernova by Kylie Minogue. Mohart versus Blue Hydrangea. And wow. Wow, this was a lip sync for the ages. But the winner I think was clear. Blue had her energy level turned up to a thousand percent the entire lip sync and her performance felt perfectly choreographed from beginning to end with literally every trick in the drag race lip sync playbook pulled out and applied. Perfectly. Mo, on the other hand, I think did a great job too, but kept her energy level a tad lower, which I think was to her detriment here. I kept waiting for her to fully turn up the heat and tear up that stage, but she felt that slow burn fantasy. And while good, Blue was just better. But that of course is a subjective opinion and I'd love to hear what y'all thought about it. Now as always, I did react to these lip syncs and runways over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits benefits like early access to my videos, access to exclusive videos, and access to the Bussy Queen Discord server. And you can join by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. And just like that, Blue Hydrangea is our first queen of the world. And honestly, I think she should be so proud of everything that she did throughout this season and everything she did in this episode tonight. In fact, I think all of these queens should be so proud of what they've showcased. And yeah, this season was not without its problems and maybe the gaggy eliminations were a little too much. But I think in five to 10 years, we'll be happy that we had some hot tea and drama to talk about rather than a season that was just smooth sailing from beginning to end. But I will be breaking all that down in a post-mortem analysis of the season in a couple of weeks. So let me know down in the comments below if there's anything specific that you think I should talk about or analyze. Analyze, analyze. Anal eyes? Whoa! And now it's the moment you've all been waiting for. My hottest on the runway goes to Pangina Heels. And I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hot on the runway tonight, and they've chosen Pangina Heels. And as always, I want to say thanks so much to you for watching today's video. Today's video sponsor, Scentbird, who you can check out using the link in the description of this video. Make sure to use code BUSSY5 to get 55% off your first month. I also want to say thanks to my generous patrons for making my channel possible and give a special shout out to Rayson, Casey Oaks, Tallulah, Brian Heesey, and Aaron Grace, who all just joined my Patreon at the hot tier. And Angel, Cyrus, Dark Sided Otter, Dickie.
Mikey, Felicia, Hector Simancas, JB, Jeffrey, Joseph, Josh Marchant, JP, and Dallas, Laura, Lissette, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matthew Bauer, Maxi Lawow, Miss F, Neely, Ryan Bintz, Sailor, Stephen, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, Topher, Triton, and Yiji, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See you later. Love ya. Bye. Whee! Stay. Stay, you bad little hair follicle. Oh. Great video. Good video, bro. Nice.